911, do you have an emergency? Today on Rescue 911, and when a speeding car strikes a teenage cyclist, paramedics fear the worst. I didn't feel the young man would make it. Don't miss the next Rescue 911. Like most teenagers, Brian Powell had dreams about his future. He belonged to his high school wrestling team and cycling club and hoped to someday compete for a wrestling state championship. But all that changed on the night of April 16th, 1990, at the close of a local Boy Scout meeting where his father, Preston, served as one of the scoutmasters. We were watching the closing of the meeting and I looked over and I said, Brian, I think I'm going to head on home. Uh, are you gonna be okay? And, and he looked at me and said, Sure, Dad, I'll see you later. And uh, that was the last moment I had with him. And I, I think when a, something tragic like this happens, that tends to freeze in your mind. Brian had ridden his new bike to the scout meeting and wanted to ride at the half mile home as well. Around dusk, he headed out into the streets. Brian bought this touring bike with his own money. It was $300, and he cherished it. And Brian was a very safe bike rider 99% of the time. He wasn't prepared for night riding. There should have been reflectors behind the seat. This one time, he forgot his helmet. But uh, it only takes one lapse, one exception, one violation of one rule to set up the environment for an accident to occur. A friend, Pat Ridgway, was also riding his bike home and happened to meet up with Brian. We didn't recognize each other at first. And then we were just talking for a while, and then I go, all right, I'll see you later. And then I kept going east on Charlotte, crossing the street, and he turned north on Huntley. And uh, I looked back, and I saw Brian going, and I saw the car coming, and I think, what's he doing? I couldn't believe it, you know, I was like confused. I didn't think this was real at first. And then uh, I immediately rode my bike over and then uh, ran over to him and knelt down. And when I looked at him, I was like, oh my God, he's not gonna make it because of all the blood that he's laying in. The driver of the car, Fonda Rush, and her daughter, Jonna, went to see what they could do to help. It was like something fell out of the sky. I, I had no idea what hit me. One second I can see, the next second I can't. By that time, Jonna was already there. And I looked down at him, and he just seemed so small and so shattered. We need to call somebody. An eyewitness to the accident called 911. Police and emergency rescue units were immediately dispatched. Patrolman Fred Howard was just two miles away from the scene of the accident. Knowing that it was an auto accident, with a bicyclist involved, a lot of things, your, your mind kind of roams, what am I going to see when I first get there? How bad is this really going to be? I got out of my cruiser, ran up to the victim. At that time, I could tell that his injuries were very severe. He was having difficulty breathing. I didn't know how, much, how many injuries he had internally. Um, the outside injuries were, were very, very bad. Put your mouth up for me. 
Patrolman Howard did not want to risk injuring Brian further by moving him, so he waited for the medic unit to arrive. Paramedic Kevin Griffith then took over the boy's care. What happened here? It was apparent to me right away that he had an obstructed airway, uh, he had very unstable uh, facial bones. It appeared to me that his face had just smashed right into the windshield. Brian Powell, how old is he? Do you know? He did have uh, gurgling respirations, um, but from previous experience, I didn't feel the young man would make it through the night. Not breathing well on his own. Brian's airway was blocked by his crushed face and his own blood. The boy was slowly suffocating. Paramedic Kevin Griffith was forced to take immediate action to try and save Brian's life. I need that airway kit up here. I'm gonna have to crack We do a here. surgical cricothyrotomy, which is uh, using a scalpel and making uh, incisions through the skin and through the cricoid membrane, which uh, you, know, you have to be able to identify certain landmarks. Once you pierce that membrane, then you're into the trachea and then introduce uh, a tube. And the biggest danger and the one that everyone's uh, afraid of is a large amount of bleeding that can occur. So yes, I was uh, somewhat apprehensive, but I knew this was the only thing that was gonna help this boy. Kevin opened Brian's airway in less than 30 seconds, then Brian was rushed to the hospital. Friday. Life can be hard in a city called the Big Easy, but the staff of Charity Hospital braves the front line every day to treat victims of brutal urban violence, trauma, life in the ER. Friday on Discovery Health Channel. I saw a policeman standing there, and, and uh, as a dad, I had that sense then that something was terribly wrong. I looked at the policeman, and I said, what happened? He said, your son's been in a bike accident. I knew then that my life would never be the same. Brian's injuries were so serious that he was airlifted to the trauma center at Children's Hospital in Columbus. The trauma team was headed by Dr. Robert Up. We started assessing him, and within a matter of minutes, he arrested. He had a cardiac arrest. Okay, we need to, we need to needle his chest. Needle the left chest. We um, rapidly put in two chest tubes. And sometime between putting that initial needle into his left chest and uh, starting to get those chest tubes in, we got him back. And he stabilized after that. Brian was taken to ICU. There was little his parents, Preston and Vicki, could do but wait. That night, we were informed that we almost lost our son twice. And the first time I saw him, it was a, a shock, a phenomenal shock. I've never seen anything like that in my entire life, and I hope I never see anything like that again. You know, my prayer at that point was, let me be there. Let me be there. Let me be the one that's hurt. I would have just given anything for him to have been better. Brian had suffered multiple fractures of his skull, face, arm, and collarbone. His recovery has been slow and painful, but his prognosis looks good. My body just, I guess, didn't want to die down, and it kept on working and fighting. I, I could pretty much say I am a fighter. That could have a big point on why I am here, like why I'm not in the hospital, or why I'm not six feet under. Recently, a surprise party was thrown in honor of paramedic Kevin Griffith for his part in saving Brian's life. Hi, Brian. Well, I'm glad to see you again. A little better circumstances this time. How you doing? Just fine. Words can't describe how I was feeling toward him. I just gave him a gigantic hug and said thank you. Kevin made a judgment call, and he saved Brian's life. He's a phenomenal gentleman. I felt like a hero then. It was a great feeling. I enjoy my work, but I mean, it's a, sometimes a bloody, thankless job, but then there are times like this that uh, make the whole job worthwhile. That's 27 points, Dad. 
After two months, Brian was released from the hospital. Since the accident, he's made remarkable progress. I still get shook up by it. Because he's my son, and I'm the mommy. But considering what he's been through, he's in fantastic shape, mentally and physically. It's just going to take time. It's made me partially blind in my right eye. And it's taught me to always wear a helmet, always, always wear a helmet, no matter what. I never realized how strong he was until the accident. I didn't realize how strong I was. It will be all right. It'll be, just take more time. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.